title of my thesis is The Dyslexic Sublime, exploring the art-making process of dyslexic artists through the lens of the sublime. Um, today, though, I'm just going to talk about uh, one specific chapter from my uh, thesis, entitled The Lived Experience of Dyslexic Artists Finding the Niche in Art. So, uh, the etymology of dyslexia then, uh, dis uh, being uh, difficulty and lexia relating to um, reading of uh, uh, reading of word, reading words, um, as outlined there by the British Dyslexia Association. Um, this learning difficulty involves accurate and fluid word reading and spelling. Um, the BDA further points out there that um, these difficulties uh, of being dyslexic are also combined with strengths um, such as problem solving, um, design and other creative skills. So according to the American Psychiatric Association, trauma is defined when somebody is experience, uh, experiences uh, physical harm or death. <coughs> Um, but recently, over the last few decades anyway, authors in the field of dyslexia um, have discoursed on being humilified, uh, humiliated, stupefied, and in some cases uh, being emotionally abused or physically abused at school. Um, as cited there by McNulty, um, dyslexic individuals don't necessarily experience uh, physical harm, but do experience intense feelings of shame and humiliation repeatedly. Uh, it's defined there by um, Alexandre Parse and uh, Michael McNulty, learning disability, LD trauma, often results in PTSD. So the research questions I'm looking to answer just in this presentation then, which also relate to my research questions and my thesis, how does the lived experience of discrimination, marginalization, and stigmatization influence the art making of dyslexic artists? And secondly, how does the experience of otherness lead to unique art making and transcendence of the trauma experience? So I'm using uh, qualitative research methodology in my, uh, uh, in my PhD to really understand the lived experience of dyslexic artists like myself. Um, these qualitative methods, such as interviews, allow for an in-depth exploration of these participants' lived experiences. I also utilize thematic analysis to um, look at the data I've gathered. Um, this helped me uh, create a nuanced understanding of dyslexic artists' experiences. So I interviewed, well, I collated 20 dyslexic artists. Um, they were um, a range of disciplines. They, they were practicing a range of disciplines such as traditional painting and drawing, photography, filmmaking, performing arts, poetry, creative writing, digital media, and music. 11 were male, nine female. Uh, they ranged between the ages of 20 and 60, 15 from the UK, and five overseas. So what I found analyzing the data was, uh, firstly, this experience of stupefaction, bullying, and labeling. Um, as you can see there, um, this is a common factor um, and affects the individual self-esteem. But also it's really affected by um, what support is outside of that um, early classroom experience, such as family or friends. RT said I'd spend most of my school time in the special needs unit. Um, he was told he'd be nothing in life. Um, he described his school experience, unsurprisingly, as horrendous. Um, ZS participant says he experienced being stupefied at school, like being excluded from um, SATs, uh, which he found uh, humiliating and he felt less adequate. Uh, similarly, uh, Jane said she did struggle at times and uh, felt thick because she perceived this as what academia told her. 
So this trauma is evident um, in various forms um, and can lead to internalizing of negative self-narratives. Uh, participant WK talked of how she struggled at school and her concern in relation to the impact on uh, child self-esteem. Uh, self she says, I saw this school environment as this system, this game that I saw what it took to win. Um, so she saw, saw the school environment as you, you had to compete and it was all about winning rather than sharing of knowledge and learning. Further results then were um, finding the niche in art. Um, so there are many studies outlining a connection between art and dyslexia. Um, people with dyslexia have a preference for the visual image um, and this can often lead to the dyslexic individual developing a career in the arts. Um, this development can lead to what's known as uh, the niche. Um, so where the individual finds something they're good at and excels in that, usually in their late adolescence or before, but before um, full-blown adult it's too late, you could say. So participant NM described being dyslexic as a double-edged sword, um, but he did attend a specialist school, um, and that was quite fortunate for him because, as he says there, he found this is an escape, his art, that is, and you were aware of the artistic talent you've been given, so obviously, his teachers picked up on his abilities, focused on his abilities rather than his disabilities. Um, ZS parents were supportive of his dyslexia. He also attended a specialist school. He says their visual intelligence is very important for dyslexics. Um, and he's a, his work has evolved into sculpture. Furthermore, then, uh, CP described his experience as just dreadful. He took up guitar lessons at the age of 10, but was told at parents' evening by his teacher in front of his parents that he, will, he should pack up as he will never play an instrument in his life. Um, he's of the age where punk was a thing, so he, he joined a punk band and instead. He only had to play three chords, he says. And he's gone on to teach music most of his life, proving his teacher wrong. Um, HS parents were supportive um, of her um, dyslexia. She was initially threatened with what was the protocol at that time with her mentally, uh, being placed in a mentally handicapped school. Her parents sent her to an expensive boarding school and she developed this interest with using her hands and this precision with a uh, machine um, and um, where she gained confidence in her adolescence. Um, she is now a successful artist and educator. So again, going back to this art and dyslexic connection then. Um, dyslexic artists have a heightened sensitivity to visual stimuli as cited there by John Stein, professor of neuroscience at Oxford University. Neuroimaging results show increased activity in the right side of the brain in dyslexics in relation to divergent thinking, problem solving. Um, again, Stein goes on to talk of this holistic artistic seeing the whole picture um, attributable to uh, the connection with art and dyslexia. He talks of superior perceptual abilities. Uh, I questioned Stein through email, at which he, um, I was grateful that he responded. He said, there are enough anecdotes now to call it evidence um, that um, this connection between art and dyslexia can be quantified scientifically. Further findings then from the data analysis was this experience of otherness. Um, many artists experience being marginalised and an outsider, but for dyslexics this is different because we are, uh, our disability is invisible. Um, this is accompanied by cognitive processing differences, um, as cited there by Asila Mahoney, an expert in the field. She says um, dyslexics deal with otherness throughout their lives. Um, this uh, experience of not fitting in, of being discriminated due to our learning difference. Um, Michael uh, 
uh, sorry, Thomas West there, um, quite eloquently puts it in a um, paragraph. He says, um, it is commonplace that the best artist or writer is an outsider observing the human events of the age. Again, many dyslexic, non-dyslexics take on this role, but many dyslexics, because of their experience of deep humiliation from the earliest days, seem naturally to assume the role of a distant observer, the truth-talking commentator who is caught up, who is not caught up in the race. They felt the otherness from the start. That was from his book, Seeing Mothers Cannot See, Thomas G. West. Um, so dyslexic artists find transcendence of these experiences through art making often, through the niche, as we've just discussed. Um, and as cited there by Appleton, art can be a useful means of recovery from trauma because um, trauma is often stored as memory, in the memory, as imagery. Artists with dyslexia find a sense of healing through art and the art making process. Finding this niche where we're, we're allowed to fail without fear of further humiliation, um, away from sometimes away from the classroom experience, learn from failure and eventually succeed and be good at something are transcendent experiences as cited there by Jackie. Participant CV said, Art making is the only place I feel at home in myself. She goes on to say, My art practice is the thing that grounds and connects me with the world and in a way that makes me feel sane and safe. MC described his art making process as a safe haven, a sacred space where all that mattered was the thing that you're working on. He calls this a comfort zone, a judge free space. He goes on further to say it's just you and your medium and that you're the driver, you're in control of your success. This is a quote from the British Dyslexia Association's conference two years ago. Thank you for listening. Uh, please ask questions.